Thank you, Mr. Art. Mm -hmm. uh, as Art said, my name is Corey. I'm one of the pastors here at Living Roots, and it's exciting to be... Actually, it's a horrible day, as a matter of fact. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is um, by God's grace and provision and calling. This is going to be my last day sharing a message with you guys here in this capacity. Um, but if you, uh, if, you, if you have been with Living Roots, you know that we've been going through a year of spiritual growth. Hopefully every single year is a year of spiritual growth. Uh, but this year we've been trying to be intentional about that. Uh, just meeting people where they are, giving people specifically what they need with where they are in their stage of maturity, their stage of walk with God. Um, whether they're children, whether they're my children, um, or... Uh, or not, or, or you've been walking with God for the last 80 years of your life. And, uh, you know, we believe every single person can grow in their relationship with Jesus. And what actually grows in your relationship is your trust in him and, is your and also your likeness of him, right? Those things grow. As we grow in our relationship with Jesus, we become more like Jesus. It's the same way in human development. As we, uh, as we grow and mature, we become, you know, we just, we continue to develop. It's the same way spiritually. And so this year, we've been trying to meet people where they are spiritually, giving them what they need. Well, we've been going through a series called Soul Food the last few weeks. And this is the last part of this series where we're trying to help nourish our souls. Does anybody want nourishment for their soul? Like, honestly, to feel revived, to feel strengthened? Because when you're malnourished, you don't, you don't grow. Amen? When you're malnourished, you feel hungry. And no matter how old you are physically, if you stop eating, you start decaying. <laughs> okay? And some of us feel that way, right? In our relationship with Jesus, maybe you've been walking with God for a long time, but because you haven't been personally connecting with Jesus, you feel malnourished. And so the point of this series is to help you find nourishment for your soul. We talked about different topics like Bible reading, you know, connecting with the Word of God, how to read the Bible, and, and how to receive nourishment through what God says about Himself. We talked about prayer. We talked about fasting last week, and this week we're going to talk about music. And I think it's ironic that we're, we're, we're talking about, you know, remember when Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, ironically, and this is by God's grace, ironically, we've been kind of hitting on all those things with this idea of spiritual nourishment. Today we're going to talk about our hearts through music connecting with God. Our soul through prayer, the real us connecting with the real God. Uh, mind through the Word of God, through the Scriptures, renewing our mind through the Word of God. Uh, and strength, fasting. I talked about last week how when we fast, we lose all of our strength and we rely on His. So to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength is, is probably the starting point for any type of nourishment for your soul. But like I said last week, it actually means nothing. What we've been talking about means nothing for you if you don't personally connect with God. It's good information. Oh, I can learn how to read my Bible. I can learn what prayer is. I can even learn about fasting and, and, and worship through music. But if you don't actually connect with God personally, there's going to be no nourishment for you. So my encouragement to you as I finish here with you is to connect with God. I can't share with you anymore after this, in this capacity at least. But my encouragement for you is to connect personally with God, to receive nourishment personally between you and God. And so today we're going to talk about worship through music. We're going to finish the series that way, and we're going to talk about how to do that. And a little bit about music, just so you know. 95% of us, um, when we hear music, dopamine is released into our brains. You know what dopamine is? It's the feel-good chemical in your brain. Okay. So for 95% of us, when we hear music, we feel good. I mean, it, we, it affects us differently, you know. Uh, for 5% of us, it doesn't. So for 5% of us, it's like music is, I don't know, whatever, you know. Well, what I want to talk about today is how to nourish your soul, not just your mind, not just your dopamine levels, which is, by the way, why music can be addicting. Like when you hear music a certain way, it has to be like, you know, because it's really probably more the dopamine in your brain making you feel good rather than spiritual nourishment. Okay. So today, I want to talk about how to not just have a, a, a dopamine high, which can be addictive, but how to have spiritual nourishment through worship and music. And I feel like Jesus talks about this. So where we're going to start today is in John chapter 4. If you have your Bibles, turn them on, open them up, go there. I'll try to have them on the screen. If technologically everything works out, you'll be able to follow along on the screen. Uh, if not, we'll be in John chapter 4 today, where Jesus highlights the heart of worship. And today we're going to talk about worship through music. Uh, 
Uh, we're going to start in verse 20, and I'll set the stage here in a second, uh, in John 4, verse 20. To set the stage here, Jesus is, is, is on a journey, and he, come, he comes across the Samaritan woman, woman at the well. Okay? Many of you probably know the story. If you've read the story, you hear about this woman at the well where Jesus, Jesus encounters, right? Uh, and uh, while Jesus is there, Jesus makes a comment to the lady, like, hey, why don't you pour me some water? And then the lady says, um, like, who, who are you even talking to me? You're a Jew, I'm a Samaritan, we shouldn't even be talking, number one. Uh, there was some division back then culturally uh, between the Samaritans and the Jews. Jesus asked this woman for, for a drink of water, and she goes, who are you to talk, like, why are you asking me for a drink, you know? And Jesus says, well, if you knew who, the gift of God and the one you're talking to, you would ask me, and I would give you living water, right? Uh, we can talk all about what that means at some point, but the point for today is that Jesus is interacting with this lady, and this lady perceives that Jesus is a prophet. Well, in John chapter 4, verse 20, after this lady perceives he's a prophet, in verse 20, she goes, so tell me, the Samaritan woman talking to Jesus. So tell me, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship, while we Samaritans claim it is here at Mount Gerizim, where our ancestors worshipped? Okay, so you're a prophet. You tell me, culturally, why do you think it's so important to worship in Jerusalem, which is what the Jewish people did, when we worship here? And what Jesus is about to say is going to get to the heart of what worship is. Right? He's going to get into that. So in verse 21, he goes, uh, Jesus replied, Believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship, while we Jews know all about him, for salvation comes through the Jews. And then verse 23, But the time is coming, indeed it's here now, when true worshipers true worshipers, so that's going to be us, will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who worship Him that way, for God is spirit, so those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. So what she was focused on the physical location of where she worshiped God. It was all about the external, physical and Jesus explains to her, actually, there's going to be a point, and there's even a point now, where it doesn't actually matter where you worship. It's more like how you worship, in spirit and in truth. What's that mean? Well, in spirit means not just a physical, not just like a, a physical building, not just a, but, but the, the, the inner self, in spirit, your inner self, the part of you that can't be seen. What he's looking for and what God the Father's looking for is the real you connecting with the real God. The real you, the spirit, with the real God, truth. The real you connecting with the real God is the heart of worship. That's what it is. So if we want to worship God, if we want to receive nourishment, not just a dopamine high when it comes to worship through music, and there's, by the way, there's multiple ways of worshiping God, not just music. Today we're going to talk about music, but we worship when the, when we, when the real us connects with the real God, that is worship, no matter what that looks like. But when it comes to music for today, when the real us connects with the real God, that's what worship through music looks like. Okay? And that's what God is after. And so with that being the framework that we're going to like start with today, we're going to go into what that looks like. Because guess what? I mean, you go through the book of Psalms. There's 150 chapters, right? The book of Psalms. Uh, Psalms are songs or poems written to God or to, or to the people, you know, but they're like songs. Guys, not all of them are rosy. Not all of them are happy, clappy, like... <laughs> I mean, I, I read Psalm 88 this last week. If you ever get a chance, read Psalm 88. That'll be our, that'll, we'll start with worship that way today. We're going to go ahead and read Psalm 88 today. We're going to enter in a place of... There's like zero hope in Psalm 88. Not a chance. Like, there's no like, God, why have you abandoned me? But I know you're going to save me. It's like nothing. It's, it's like, I just feel like you've abandoned me, God. That's it. That's the real psalmist connecting with the real God. God wants to be worshipped that way. Not just a ritualistic, you know, kind of go through the motions, mechanical process. He wants the real you connecting with the real God. But it's also based on truth as well. It's not just how you feel, which, I, by the way, Psalm 88 is worshipful because it's, it, that's how the person really was. That's what they really brought to God. And they really brought it 
to God. It's worshipful because it was the real them connecting with the real God. The point is, we don't have to clean up ourselves when we feel bad and then go before God. No, God wants the real you. He wants to be worshipped in spirit and in truth. It's not like get your life together and then you can go approach God. It's not like feel better and then you can sing songs and talk to God. No, God wants the real you to connect with the real Him. Okay, That's the heart of worship. Um, yeah, so Psalm 88. I, I encourage you to read Psalm 88, by the way. I don't have it up here, but I just felt like what a worshipful time. Cause that, and it wasn't, it wasn't written by Billie Eilish, guys. No? Okay. Uh, it was... You know, it, it, it wasn't like a depressing, sad, it, it's literally, you know, just the, 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 it was a son of Korah, you know, writing to, to God, you know, this, this psalm. And so the real you connecting with the real God. If you want to worship God through music or you want to worship God in general, bring the real you to the real God. That's what worship looks like. Um, but that being said, worship is also a response. Psalm 88 was a response to what was going on in the individual's life. When we worship God, we respond to God. And so let's look at that for a second. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3 for that. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. It says, Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. Um, I'll go to the, the ESV version of that just to give you like a, a slight difference here. Uh, ESV version says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in, wisdom, in all wisdom, singing songs and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts. Now, uh, in the original Greek, there's no, there's no punctuation in Greek. So in the NLT version, it says, Let the message about Christ and all its richness fill your lives, period. Which, by the way, what is the message about Christ? That's the gospel about Christ, the good news about Christ. Let that fill your lives. Not just the past work, of, like the finished work of Jesus in the sense where he died for your sins, and so now you're going to go to heaven someday. There is, that is part of the gospel. But there's the past work where you are holy because of the finished work of Jesus. He took your sinner place. He who knew no sin became sin so that you know, through him, we could be the righteousness of Christ, right? Amen? Amen? Let that message fill your life because seriously, if you think about that, he became sin for you, so you don't have to prove yourself anymore. Anybody here need to prove themselves? Not through the finished work of Jesus. Let that fill your lives. That's the past work that you are forgiven. The current work is that you're being set free. Like the, the power of sin has been broken in your life. You're being set free from the presence of sin, and someday you will be set free from the presence of sin. There's past, present, and future. You don't need to worry about the future because that's already taken care of. You don't need to worry about you know, uh, the, the present even because God is working in and through you, right? And even the past. And so there's, the, the message about Christ needs to fill your life. So that should lead, like we respond to that. That leads to worship. That leads to thankfulness. You know, it says, um, the, the last part of that in verse 16 says, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. Why are we thankful? Because of what God do, has done. Because of who He is. You can't be thankful for something that you don't have. Okay? We're thankful because of who God is and what He has done. So if you want to worship God, you want to bring the real you to the real Him, yeah, you bring your real you, but let's talk about the real him for a second. The real him is expressed in the gospel. It's expressed in the finished work of Jesus. It's expressed in how righteous you are, how holy you are apart from your works. Right? We work because we are holy. We work because we are saved. That was said last week during testimony time. Right? It's the finished work of Jesus that, that leads to a response um, uh, through worship. But, uh, but, uh, but I, I put both of these versions here, ES, ESV and NLT. This is the NLT. Because I want to highlight something. ESV, I think, uh, in, in the Greek, there's no punctuation in the Greek. Okay? So we put punctuation, like periods, commas, and stuff like that, to make it fit English. Okay? In the original Koine Greek, there's no commas punctuation. Okay? So how this is broken up in the NLT is broken up differently in other translations. Okay? Uh, just like when Jesus says, uh, surely I tell you today, 
you will be with me in paradise. He could have also said, surely I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. We don't know where the comma is. We just try to, you know, so we don't put weight on that, okay? But that being said, let me go to the ESV where it puts all, kind of all one train of thought. It says, let the word of Christ, which is the gospel, dwell in you richly, teaching and, and admonishing or encouraging one another in all wisdom, singing songs and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. That's worship. That's worship. It starts with God. It starts with the finished work of Jesus. There is no worship without responding to God. Okay? We, it starts with that. It starts let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And out of that comes thankfulness. Out of that comes worship. Right? The real you connecting with the real God. We've got to know who the real God is. Okay? Um, and so, I want to say this. I want to say worship through music is a response to the finished work of Jesus. So that out of responding to that comes our hearts and how we, we respond through music. Okay? It's also, by the way, music is also not just a response. It's also a reminder or, or, or a vehicle for strengthening others. Did you know that? So when you sing, you're responding out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of your heart, you also sing. But it also encourages and strengthens others. As you listen to music... You're pointed to the, the real God and what God's really like, and it strengthens you. And we see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, when they're talking about like a heavenly language, uh, Paul says, you know, I, I can sing in a heavenly language, but I can also sing with my mind. If I sing with a heavenly language, no one's going to know what I'm saying, and so how could I strengthen anybody? As you sing with your mind, as you're proclaiming thankfulness to God, it strengthens others. So worship through music, when you sing, it's a response to your heart. But you can also listen to music to be reminded of who God is. Christian, non-Christian. You can be pointed to the truth about who God is, Christian or non-Christian. And it can bring you to a place of, wow, encountering God. Because when you encounter God, when you see God as He is, He changes who you are. You see that every time. Every time throughout Scripture, Moses, uh, Isaiah, when they saw the real God, it changed who they were. Woe is me. Like, whoa. Right? So, uh, music is, 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 a, is a response as we sing, but it also, as we listen to music, it's also a reminder and encouraging strength for us. Okay? I want to end with this, though. I want to end with a psalm. Because most psalms are not Psalm 88. Most psalms are not Billie Eilish. Okay? No, I, I probably shouldn't elevate Billie Eilish. Should probably, maybe three people know who Billie Eilish is here. That's great. That's wonderful. Um, yes. Uh, but not all songs highlight the, the depths of despair in our lives and in our hearts. Not all psalms are that way. In fact, most psalms, many psalms, are psalms of praise. Why is that? Because it's a response to God. Let's go to Psalm 150, the last psalm in the whole book. He says, praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heaven. Praise Him for His mighty works. Why do you praise Him? Because of what He's done. And why do you praise Him? Praise His unequal greatness for who He is. What He's done, who He is. Praise Him with a blast of the ram's horn. Praise Him with a lyre and harp. Praise Him with a tambourine and dancing. Praise Him with strings and flutes. Praise Him with a clash of cymbals. Praise Him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that breathes sing praise to the Lord. It's like gr grab your shoe, flip your chair, praise God. Dance, sing, bang things together. Do something because of what God has done for you. Right? And who He is. Most psalms are this way. It's like, seriously, remind my heart who God is and what He's done. And I'll start dancing. Like, it doesn't... Like, do something. You can't just sit still like, oh, that's interesting. You know, like, who God is and what He's done. It's like, flip your chair. Do something because of who God is and what He has done for you. Okay? And so, if, if I want to leave you with one thing. The one point in this whole message is uh, God wants to be worshipped with the real you connected with the real God. Please know who the real God is. And you will be flipping chairs. You will be dancing. You won't be like, you know, it, it's like there's a response to that. The real you, though, connecting with the real God. 
And so worship through music is when the real you connects with the real God. The one thing I encourage you to do, besides read Psalm 88, I do that, do that. I encourage you to write your own psalm. Write your own psalm. Bring the real you to the real God. Do it. I had a chance to do that this week, you know, very worshipful, very not a dopamine rush. I'm not a musical guy, but a very soul strengthening experience as you bring the real you. What would you write? Why have you abandoned me, God? What would you write? God, why do I feel me? Why do I feel so insecure, God, when you, when you are who you are? Why do, why do I feel like such a like incompetent when you're the one that strengthens me? Like I mean, like the real, the like real you, the real you to the real God. That's what worship through music is like. God isn't just about you know the physical; He's also spiritual. So He wants to be worshipped in the spirit and in truth. Okay, so as I close today, let me pray for you. And this is my last message to you guys. What a better message than the real you connecting with the real God, so I really don't need to be here anymore. <laughs> right? I mean, I love you guys so much. Like, but, but that's the connection. It's the real you. It's not just hearing someone tell you, but it's the real you connecting with the real God. I encourage you to write your own psalm this week. Let me, let me close this in prayer. Father, I thank you so much just for this day and for this opportunity to be here. Um, I thank you that you want the real us. Not the mechanical, not just because we are supposed to do it us, but, but the real us. You want our hearts. You want us to love you with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Every bit of us. That's good news for us that you actually want that. Thank you, God for who you are in your greatness. Thank you, God, for your finished work through Jesus. Thank you for making us holy, set apart, competent through the Spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you for today. May we connect with you. May the real us connect with the real you. In Jesus' name, amen.